What is happening, Dolphins fans? And welcome to another episode of the Finns Tailgate. I am your host, El Capitan, and today on the tailgate party that never seems to stop, this is the first part of a two-part series of players stock up, stock down, heading into the 2023 season. But before we get going on this first part of the series, make sure you guys are hitting the like button and subscribing to the show down here on YouTube. Shout out to all the members and all the mods. We appreciate everyone who contributes to the show. And we also encourage you guys to check out the link in the description for Fanatics, who are, we're official partners of, and buy any of your sports gear from them as well as checking out Backroom Collections. And if you do find something nice from Backroom Collections, which if you're looking, you'll find tons of nice stuff, make sure to use offer code hashtag TFTG to get 10% off of your purchase. So guys, first guy on our stock up edition list is Durham Smythe. Drafted out of Notre Dame in the fourth round at pick 123 in 2018. As a rookie, he had six receptions for 50 yards used primarily as a blocker. He then followed that up with seven receptions for 65 yards in 2019. 2020 was a pickup year for Durham where he was used in an expanded role where he had 26 of 29 passes. So that's pretty good. He only missed three of his targets in 2019 and that amassed to 208 yards as well as two touchdowns in 2021. He then had his best year where he caught 34 of his 41 targets for 357 yards. He also ran the ball a few times as well, picking up only three yards on two rushes, which I believe both were for first downs, if memory serves me correct. This uptick from Durham Smythe and the fact that he's been somewhat of a security blanket for Tua the last year has earned him a new contract with the Dolphins worth up to $7 million for two years. His upward trajectory will continue, as we all hope, and I think now under new Mike McDaniel, along with John Embry in this new offense, we're going to really see the best Durham Smythe we ever have. John Embry with notable tight ends as George Kittle, maybe we can look forward to Durham becoming George Kittle light in this new offense. We've seen him with his hand in the dirt out of the backfield as the lead blocker. He might even be, you know, a little trickery weapon coming out the back door with the ball on a little shovel pass. I'm super excited to see what Durham Smythe can do out of this Mike McDaniel offense outside zone blocking scheme. It's going to be fun to see where Durham takes it up. So we'll be watching close Durham. Your stock is way up here at the Finns tailgate, and we're excited to see what happens this year. Our next player on this stock up edition is Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones drafted out of Texas in the third round, 70th overall in 2020, started four games in a limited role in rotation as a rookie. He was effective in the box and blitzing the passer, getting three hurries, one sack, and only surrendering one touchdown in the passing game. In 2021, in an expanded role, after losing Bobby McCain and being paired with new rookie picked in the second round, Javon Holland, he stepped up his game. Started 13 of 15 games played, he proved that he was a valuable starting safety, surrendering zero touchdowns in the passing game, getting four hurries, 14 pressures, five sacks, and 79 combined tackles last year. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I look at Jones and Holland as one of the best young safety tandems in the NFL. For my money, you couldn't ask for any better from a third-round pick for Brandon Jones. The guy is legit. He's been one of the best blitzing safeties in the NFL since he's come, and I can only expect that now with him and Holland getting their second year together under their belt, Holland going into his second, Jones going into his third, that this young safety tandem is going to knock the socks off of everybody. So, shout out to you, Brandon Jones. Pretty awesome. Our next person on our list is Chase Edmonds. 
Chase Edmonds drafted in 2018 by Arizona in the fourth round out of Fordham University by Arizona. A dual threat type of running back. As a rookie, he got 208 yards and two touchdowns on 60 attempts, and he also had 20 receptions with 103 yards, living up to that dual threat name. In 2019, with 60 attempts, he gained 303 yards and four touchdowns. He also had 12 receptions in, in 2019 on 21 targets for 105 yards and one touchdown playing in only 13 games in 2020 on, on 97 attempts, he had 448 yards, one touchdown, but became a, a real treat in the passing game with 53 receptions for 402 yards on 67 targets with four touchdowns. Now, 2021, he did miss some time with injury, but that didn't stop him from having one of his best years, even in a shared role up to this point, always running back by committee with Arizona, never being the clear RB number one. He still got, he still got a lot of production in the 12 games he did have, which he started 11 of them. He had a career high in rushing with 592 yards on 116 attempts with two touchdowns. And then he also had 43 receptions for 311 yards on 53 targets. The Dolphins pick him up, giving him a new contract worth up to $12 million these next two years, $4 million of it in a signing bonus with $6 million guaranteed. Even with the additions of Sony Michelle, Raheem Mozart, and still with Miles Gaskin on the roster, along with Sylvan Ahmed and newcomer Zaquandre White, it's clear that the Dolphins are projecting Chase Edmonds as RB number one. I don't think there's too much pushback from anybody that with new Mike McDaniel coming in here and installing this zone blocking scheme that Chase Edmonds is going to definitely be RB one. And he's a dual threat running back that I think we can all appreciate. Very, very good. We're excited to see how he's going to be used in this role. So that'll do it for us today here on the Finn's Tailgate, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, make sure you guys are hitting the like button, subscribing to the show here on YouTube, and please leave me a comment. Tell me what you guys think of these shorter videos that we're just cranking out a little bit of stuff on here. I'd really like to know your feedback, so please leave a comment in there, and I'll respond to everybody that does. And uh, thank you guys and make sure that you guys are checking out all the other great shows we have here on the network with Tonk 7 TMI Tuesdays on Tuesday, Color Commentary co-hosting. You guys can also catch Color doing his own stuff on Thursdays and other days during the day. Saturdays, late night exhale. Everybody can catch Ali doing the late night exhale. And every other day of the week, you got me, El Capitan, TFTG family. So guys... Please help the show, support our, our partners in the links in the description. We also have our own swag. We'd really appreciate all the support, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>